Good day to you. Today the Lord's word and vision comes to us from God's desire to make a place where he can touch and bless the world. And that place is the praying saint's life. Whenever God can see a saint in prayer, saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on my patch of earth, he comes. So the, God is chief cartographer of heaven. He's the chief husbandman also, chief builder also. But he has many roles he serves all the time. So what is the cartography he's doing, the map making? God is the ma main map maker. He finds on earth places where his voice has touched. Places from which prayer rises to touch his heart. And there's a continual dwelling and a coordination between heaven and earth in such places. Like the way uh, Jacob found Bethel, those places are in touch with the Lord and they become his memory points, his touchdown points. And those altars of prayer that every family needs to make an altar of prayer that will be heard in heaven. Uh, when there's many threatenings, uh, Peter said, Oh Father, behold, Lord, behold, by a holy child, do miracles. And behold, they are threatening. So when there's many threatenings, uh, when we take to prayer, and when there are other threats, threats within, threats out, COVID problems, uh, shutdowns, you know, uh, viruses, vaccines, ill health, immunity destroyed, different things, then God hears the prayer. And the Lord marks those prayer places and he begins to draw lines and streetways, pathways of redemption because the ways of escape from death belongs to our God. He makes those pathways of redemption to other people who can be saved by our prayer. So the Lord is such a servant all the time waiting to draw his finger with a silver line uh, to a door of death to get someone to get saved, to come to the Lord. Uh, so we look at this from Acts chapter 6, Stephen's prayer. How Stephen's prayer came out. Stephen lived an intense life. God tracked his life and he was ready to be offered. Uh, Stephen may have known that might be his last day when he was being examined by the Jewish Sanhedrin, led by Saul, who was a great theologian, well-known man, one of the 70 members of the Sanhedrin. Everybody knew Paul, uh, Saul, his name was the... A uh, great teacher Gamaliel and a brilliant student of Gamaliel and who knows what Stephen was like. They might have studied together. I'm just conjecturing. So it is said, uh, so St uh, Stephen had come to this point and Saul was agreeing in this execution and he kept the, he kept all the uh, garments of those who were going to stone Saul. And Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death, says Acts 8.1. Acts 8.54 says, I beg your pardon, Acts 7.54 says, Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gathering their teeth, gnashing their teeth at him. So when people are gnashing their teeth, teeth at Christians, because we know the word of God says in Matthew 24, in every nation persecution will come. Uh, we have to mind Matthew 24.8, when the travails begin, we are told many will be offended and betray one another so that we do not betray one another. And it says many will be deceived because of false prophets and the love of many will become cold uh, because of iniquity and he that endures unto the end shall be saved. So we need to be careful of that. Uh, so they were gnashing their teeth. It's expected. Then when they were gnashing their teeth, Stephen opened his eyes and looked to heaven. He being full of the Holy Spirit, that is the response to gnashing teeth. We don't gnash teeth. We don't react in kind. We, uh, being full of the Holy Spirit, gaze intently into heaven. So that's the way we overcome now. We gaze intently into heaven and saw the glory of God. So when people are gnashing their teeth at Christians for different reasons, we have three things to do, full of the Holy Spirit, gaze intently into heaven and saw the glory of God. And this gate of heaven that opened for Stephen and the crown of life God has put on Stephen 
already the Lord was drawing a silver line on the sands of time, a pathway under Saul's feet while he is supervising the execution of the saint. God is beginning a redemptive trap, a way of escape and in few weeks time on the way to Damascus, this silver line into which Saul was drawn will meet with the crown of life God was already keeping for Saul of Tarsus to turn to be Paul and be saved. And in, 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 in a pretty quick time, the two are going to meet and what did, where did the generation come? Uh, with Stephen's prayer. So here is Stephen and he said, Behold, I see heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. This is the response to persecution. <clears throat> the, the response to threat. And Paul himself later said, Acts 20, 24. This is how Paul lived the gospel. This is how Paul lived the gospel, Acts 20, 24. Speaking to the Ephesian church, Paul said his testimony, I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself so that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, so that was Paul and also Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the serpent with the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. So that's, that's the winning altar. Such a life, such an altar will be visited by the Lord and it will lead to another gate of heaven which Paul saw on the way to Damascus. He met the gate of heaven and he took up the mantle that saw, uh, Stephen had run so well and laid it down that Saul of Tarsus may take it up. This is how heaven moves mantle to mantle, crown to crown, make a pathway in prayer from one altar to the next altar. And God is doing all this cartography for the salvation of nations, redemption of nations. Nations are not without help. God is planning all the time how to bless a nation through a dedicated life of a servant of God. They may rail at him. Uh, John Wesley got railed, William Booth got railed, all the pioneers we know. They all got railed at by fellow Christians also. But God made the mark and they made the mark with their God. Behold, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They cried out with a loud voice. The reaction covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him and the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So Saul was as young as Stephen at that time. They, are went, they went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And Saul of Tarsus did not know. Already a silver line was being drawn under his feet and a crown of his life was awaiting to meet with him in few weeks time on the way to Damascus. The two will catch up. He will be on a silver line. He did not know, but God drew it from that life of Stephen at his death's door to make a door of redemption. And gate of heaven will meet up with Saul. So when you're praying today, where do you think God will draw us a silver line? To which friend of yours? Which mighty man? Which powerful man? God is all ready for the salvation of a nation so that there'll be a gate of heaven that meets the silver knight. And it was all because of your prayer altar. So every Christian family, get your prayer altar. Every church, Sunday and other times, get your prayer altar intense. And what is our response? Heaven opens. Full of the Holy Spirit, uh, gaze in, intently into heaven and saw the glory of God. This is the threefold uh, gesture, how we overcome this present trend. And then we know the result in Acts chapter 9, on the way to Damascus, the glory of God meets with Saul. Uh, and this is how it happened. Then Saul, still breathing street, threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest. 
Thank God nobody has still threatened us with death. Thank God. And asked for letters from him to go to the synagogues at Damascus so that he may, if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them uh, to Jerusalem. As he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. You see the same light that was flashing on Stephen at death's door flashed on Paul, Saul of Tarsus. Just shik, another place, another time, not too far away, flashed. Fell to the ground and heard a voice. You remember Stephen fell to the ground. Saul falls to the ground. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? He recognized the authority in the voice. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Immediately, Saul realized this is about Stephen's death and Saul comes to Christ. So in the Old Testament, every altar was named by God, Jehovah Nissi, when Moses, Aaron, who lifted up their hands on Mount Rephidim, no Amalek shall prevail against the throne of God. No Amalek shall prevail against God's praying people. No, no, no. That's the lesson of history. But God's praying people in the catacombs or in Colombo or in London, God's or in Melbourne or in Sydney, God's praying people. Uh, no Amalek can overturn because it's written, Jehovah Nissi. The Lord, our banner. Every time uh, in the Old Testament, God's name was revealed and written and signed up for us, there was a praying altar. Moses cried and there was a praying altar. Jehovah, uh, Rapha, there was a praying altar for healing. Then Gideon cried and gave his life and there was a praying altar. Yahweh, Shalom, everywhere. Then Hannah was crying and the nation is delivered and there was a praying altar that said Yahweh, Sabbath. Lord of the armies. So every time someone makes an altar, the Lord marks it and makes a silver line for the next gate of heaven. So we expect many silver lines in our nation, Sri Lanka, and many gates of heaven opening in different cities in Sri Lanka. And people of note, repute, educated people, powerful people, seeing vision of Christ and turning to Christ. And we, we trust in every nation this is going to happen. Gates of heaven will open to bless the nations, to recover from COVID, bring prosperity. God is on the move for a God reset. And we are saying, Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Spirit and the bride say, even so, come Lord Jesus. God bless you.